Hey, welcome to my software journal. My name is Ronald, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to write a software engineer resume. So, let's get into it. So before we start this video, I'm just gonna preference that this is how I write my resumes, which allows me to land interviews pretty consistently, even a interview with Google. And that's gonna be for our story for another time. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated on videos that I post. So we all know that an interview is the first step into getting a job. It pretty much gives the attention of the recruiter that wants to go out and hire you as a talent. If you have a really good resume and it looks pretty sharp and it's showing all the details and stuff for you for that particular position, then they're gonna contact you and then we're just gonna to get to the interview process. But that's gonna be for uh, another day, for another time, and I'll probably talk about that as well. But today we're gonna to be talking about the resume and how I create my resumes, which to some might not be the right way, but it is though. So you can modify how I'm gonna create this resume today to your liking, but you better not, because I will find you. So let's get into it. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is start with your name. Your name is the first thing that the recruiter is gonna see, so you wanna make sure it's visible, it's there, and it's on your resume. One thing you don't wanna do is have your resume out there, and no one knows who resume this is. So we'll put our name here. So as you can see, it's not too big, not stylistic, it's plain and simple. That's pretty much what we're gonna be going with for the most part. All right, and then after that, below that, it's like two lines, little small little lines here and there. It's gonna put your email and your phone. So you gotta give something or some type of contact for your recruiter to get back at you so they can call you because of this awesome resume that you'll be making today. And make sure you choose an email that doesn't have a lot of traffic because you're gonna be getting a lot of emails for this awesome resume that you're gonna be putting out there. Make sure you put a very low traffic email and that you check it on a daily basis. So we're gonna enter in the first section of this resume and it's the experience. I forgot the preference this as well. This resume is gonna be like a one page resume and it's mainly for anyone who doesn't have experience and may have experience. So if you do have experience, this section is for you. And we're gonna to go to another section later on in this segment of the video and it's gonna be dealing with projects. And this is for those people who don't have experience and they wanna get more of a technical background in the field of software engineering. All right, so as you can see, you have your company name here that you work for and then you have the city in the state and also you have the date as well for this resume and it's pretty useful to know you know if you're currently working at this position or you're not and when you start it and so on i usually do a typical month and year and that's pretty much it also below the company name you have your job title so i forgot to mention that i want to go into bullet points and bullet points I see this so many times on resumes and I got tired looking at it because for me, in a, in a stand, from a standpoint of reading, bullet points don't make sense for reading, even for people who are reading resumes. Yeah, so bullet points take up a lot of space and it actually introduce a lot of white space to your resume. So when you're dealing with this, you're writing out your resume and stuff, it takes up a lot of real estate. You don't really want that. If you're not filling up the whole entire line, it's pretty much useless to have a bullet point. And like I said earlier, it really doesn't make sense from a reading standpoint because when you really think about what a bullet point is, it's supposed to list out something. But yeah, you're listing out your experiences, but in the argument type sense, that that's when you'll use a bullet point. I think this article that I'm going to show you, or actually in the description below, actually gives you a good example of when to use bullet points. And it kind of really resonated with me when I read it. Yeah, so now I've formatted my resume to actually just do a summary of it. And it really, really takes up less space and really gets into slowing down the reader to read what my resume is about and pretty much you just have all the stuff that you did in a past tense kind of thing you're going to hear it all the time so i developed this i migrated this i wrote this i analyzed this and so on so i kind of use that you know past tense approach of doing things i'm actually moving towards i built this with this technology and so on i did x y with 
Z technology. It's mainly for a recommendation from fame companies such as Google, Amazon, and so, so on. Like a lot of people like to put technologies on their resume. It's like I use X, Y, Z, Z, and whatever, but they didn't actually really explain how they use X, Y, and Z technology in order to build the application. That's why I'm really moving towards that. And you kind of see it here. I develop end-to-end -end Salesforce solutions using declarative configurations and customizations. Apex class and all this other stuff. So when I really wrote this resume before I got my previous job now, I actually pretty much did a lot of keywords on what they're looking for in the job description. I pretty much hit on those keywords. That's another thing too. Most of the time during these days, people put your stuff into like a process system and it's getting read by a machine. So recruiters don't even, it's not the first person who will see your resume. They're probably the last, like second person or third person seeing your resume. Make sure that you include those keywords because they automatically throw those other resumes out if it doesn't match you know, certain criteria that they're looking for in the job position. If you just have random words that don't really match, then they just not gonna look at your resume at all. It's just gonna go to the very bottom of the pile. This is really important just to put relevant stuff on your resume. All right, so we're gonna go into the next section. This is the projects. So I would like to say this is where you can really shine, especially if you don't have any experience. I really think this is probably the most important part for inexperienced and also experienced people as well, because it really shows your dedication and determination outside of work to actually master this craft, uh, software engineering, programming, and you know building applications and systems. So if you have something on your resume and you're really proud of, and it shows a wide technical span, of your ability to you know implement cold systems and stuff recruiters are going to look at that it's like okay this guy is really serious or this girl is really serious about doing what they need to do outside of work in order to get it i'm currently like learning stuff on gcp and all this other stuff and i'm building applications with gcp and a little bit of aws here and there but for the most part it's like that has nothing to do with my Salesforce type stuff that I'm doing currently, but it's introduced me to a lot of stuff as far as how can I implement on these different cloud solutions and how can I you know, build applications on these systems and services. It's introduced me to a, a whole realm of technology that wasn't gonna be introduced in my job. So I wanna be introduced to it outside of my job so I can be more knowledgeable somewhere else because my job might not actually give me the opportunity to learn that particular space. I'm forcing myself to learn this stuff on my own and keep myself accountable of my own growth. And yes, I really do believe that coding in tech is a craft. If you really think about it, the amount of work that you actually have to put in to start, you'll become more confident in what you need to do as you continue to implement stuff over and over, as you continue to make mistakes and like learn from those mistakes. You will get to the point where, all right, you're fine tuning a, a pencil that you're painting or even a paintbrush that you're painting a picture for someone. That's what essentially I think of coding and just tech in general. You're essentially painting a picture for the clients or the business on what they need and to inspire them to do what they need to do with this application that you, you're you pretty much drawing a picture of. So yeah, I pretty much use that same kind of logic when I'm dealing with the sentence structure and stuff. I built this with this technology and also it's going to slow down your recruiter or reader to actually look at your resume because now there's little small segments or excerpts they know exactly they should point their attention to. And you know, give a name of your project and stuff. So like you have this project, you know, 3D simulation demo. So I did this with like Unity and all this other stuff. I actually landed a contract to actually do the simulation for like a startup. It was a really cool experience because I learned how to gather information. I learned how to implement, find a solution for that information that they provided. And I also delivered that information, got paid for that information because I met their requirements. All right, so we're gonna go to the last section. This is the last section of them all. And we're gonna go into education, training, and certifications. It's only really three sections here. It's only really three sections. I really consolidated like probably one section, three sections into one section and 
put it there because a lot of people like to put, you know, what tools they use, so on and all this other stuff. I'm gonna touch on that later on. As you can see, you know, if you have education, put it there, put it there first thing at the very top of your education and training certifications section. Put it there, put the name of the university, city, and graduated date. A lot of people like to put their GPAs and stuff. To be honest, when you get out of college, no one wants to really know your GPA. And I really think too, when you get out of college or when you're starting something, it really doesn't matter if you put your GPA or not. People just wanna see your experience and where you're at in your skill level. There's also some other stuff too. So when, below that, you can put some training and where you got that training from, when you got it, and when you got certified and so on. I got certified with the Scrum Alliance, essentially at, you know, city, state, sort of like 2018, and I was a certified Scrum Master. So I got certified and learned that whole methodology of Scrum. Another thing too is Salesforce, and I got my Platform Developer 1 certification. I might rearrange this section later on in life if I get more certifications because some might actually expire and some might actually you know, take up more room because as you see, we don't have that much space at this point. This is a one page resume that consolidates all this stuff in one. If you can just imagine if all of this stuff was bullet points, oh my gosh. See, like it just indents, it, it automatically indents. Don't like that. Look at all that white space. Unneeded, unneeded. Ugh, just, just messy. Now we're gonna go into the segment of what you should not put on your resume. And let me zoom out on this one because I don't want What you should not put on your resume. Pointless things you should not put on your resumes. Word, Excel, etc. that whole Microsoft suite. If you don't know Word or Excel at this, at this point, you're gonna learn and you're gonna learn fast, okay? If you don't know Excel and all this other stuff, you gonna learn some more. Like these tools aren't that hard. You can look up online on how to use them. So don't put that stuff on there because it's almost like given that you, you already know this stuff. A list of technologies. Like I said, why would you need to list out all your technologies and you already mis probably mentioned them in your summaries and your sentences. Only put relevant type stuff on there. Don't fluff it out. That's pretty much it. It's like you keep it short and concise keep it relevant and yeah, condense it down because all that white space with the bullet points is unneeded. So that's pretty much the summary of this video. So let's get into the, the last part. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave down in the comments what you thought of the video. Like how do you write your resume? And if you got some value from this video, make sure you get a like and you know, subscribe to the channel if you don't you know, like this channel. Until next time, Peace.